I thank the chairman and I'd like to welcome the minister and the officials to the to the committee. I suppose um, I'd like to acknowledge the level of, of reform that you've initiated across a, a range of sectors, of much of it positive. And I suppose reading the report from the, the, uh, the group, the, the Rural Challenge report, I suppose it's very difficult to look at rural areas in isolation to, to urban areas. There's obviously a huge interconnection between the two of them. In my own area, my own constituency of, of Galway West, where you have a city in the middle of County Galway and you kind of marry to the west and east Galway uh, on the right-hand side of the county. And um, a huge interconnection between the two. A lot of people living in, in rural areas and working uh, in the city. And uh, certainly during the Celtic Tiger years, uh, there would have been vibrant rural communities, but that's not to say there was local employment in those rural areas. There was there was there was employment within the cities, and there was there was there was movement of, of labour and that, and obviously that has changed now. So it's 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 very difficult, and I I, I think that the, the report is obviously very much is a welcome a lot of the initiatives and and. Uh, proposals and comment in the report, but I believe there's there's still, um, uh, we have to accept that there, there, there's a huge connection between r rural and urban. Um, Agritourism is, is, is mentioned hugely in, in, the, in, the, uh, in, in the report and indeed in your contribution, I accept the, the work uh, in relation to Mayo and I know that you'd be aware of the ongoing work in relation to the, the Connemara Greenway which has gone through the, um, through the onboard plan of hearing or awaiting a decision on that, hopefully it's positive. And that sort of initiatives I know will help places like Clifton and, uh, and, and such areas as will a strong outcome of the common agricultural policy which we've seen, um, which we've seen settlement and hopefully the, the, uh, the, the Minister will, be, will come up with an agreeable uh, structure to the distribution of those cap monies. Uh, you will be aware, though, Minister, uh, the, the concern in some rural areas regarding the changes to the leader structures. And um, I brought to your attention before regarding, for example, the, the uh, leader company in Connemara, which is Forum Connemara, which has a long history since back to 1989. And uh, they're hugely concerned about the changes because that is a peripheral location. It's, a, it's an hour and 10 minutes from Galway City where the where, where county buildings are. And they feel that uh, the, the changes in structures would lead to a certain amount of isolation, notwithstanding your, your, your support for a bottom-up approach in any new structures. And I, I suppose just ask you to, 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 to comment on how you would address their concerns that any new structures would, um, would, would lead to, to more peripherality of um, a place like that and a place like, like Lecture Frack, where we have to accept that in some rural isolated peripheral locations that, if you like, state jobs or jobs such as true leader are hugely important to the local economy. Um, seven or ten or twelve jobs in a small community like that have a huge impact. And where those services are been drawn into Galway City, albeit and in, in county buildings, there would be, there would be a, a, a huge concern. Um, amongst local community. And I appreciate you, you've pointed out that it is the, the sort of the administration, administrative burden and the, the, the check writing, if you like, that will be taken over, that there will still be this bottom-up approach, but there's still some concern that once Galway, Galway City and Galway County Council, where, where, the, where the county buildings are, as I said, takes control, that will lead to uh, a, a loss and a, and a, and a, and a reduction in the, in, the, in the role of forum. Um, just a few other points. I suppose we have, we've seen, and I was at a showcase in the in the, in the RDS some time ago regarding crafts. We have a very much a vibrant uh, craft sector, and we had we had them in here before. And uh, I was, as I said, I was at the showcase. Wonderful, wonderful work going on in small crafts and 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 arts and that in rural areas. And hugely, I think they should be very much uh, supported uh, into the future. Um, so you might just take up some of those comments. Yes, Thank you, Deputy. Um, I can understand how you know, any leader group or community organisation would be concerned about their future because there's a number of people well paid in those organisations. Um, in Galway, for example, you know, you have Corlin and Ilan Cho, which has five staff, and the CEO is paid 55,000, 53,000. Uh, in Forum Connemara, you have, you know, the CEO is paid 84,000. And the total number of staff is 17, of which the Rural Development Programme has two full-time. Uh, and then you have Galway Ru City Partnership, and you have Galway Rural Development Company. Uh, all of them, you know, well paid, and uh, Galway City well, Partnership... The forum will be at the lower end of the scale, as was called in Ireland. But they have a low budget. Yeah, well, in proportion to their budget, 
In proportion to their budget, uh, I think that you will concede that the level of administrative costs associated with these particular uh, entities is far unacceptable. I want to protect the frontline services and the delivery of what we have to these particular areas, but I, I, I certainly not going to countenance, uh, you know, setting up a structure that is going to gobble up an enormous amount of the money in administrative costs. And that's what's happening at the moment. And when you see the outcome of the Common Agricultural Policy Talks, you will see that the leader funds are going to be considerably less, probably less than half of what we had in the last round, because at a time, on the last occasion, we were able to give a 5% national top-up on top of the 5% that came through the Rural Development Programme. So we don't have the luxury, I'm afraid, of all the structures that we've become accustomed to under social partnership and under the, the good days. So we have to rationalise structures and we have to see how we can use the existing, other existing structures like local government to pay for the heating and the light and the offices uh, and develop a one-stop shop approach towards the community and economic development of those areas. It should be about what we're going to do for the people of the area, not about uh, long-established structures uh, that are actually protecting people and jobs that are highly, too highly paid. And I would point out to you, Deputy, is that Forum Connemara was just established since 2009. So I don't know whether it should have been established in 2009, but it was. It's, it's there as a, as a local voluntary group since 1989. Oh, in a long history, and they were, they were operating a, through, yeah, through yeah, Galway Rural Development yeah, at the same time. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, I know the Minister for the day was very anxious that he'd have another structure, and he, he certainly had four structures in his own area, so I have fair play to him. But well, we, we, I, I, we, I don't we think have we the have advantage that. of a vibrant gate that, and offshore islands. Which and, you have have and, various, and, various, and you have Uteras and Aguil at there as well. various ways. But, but uh, I mean, the, the local. I want to take all the asset force and bring it back in. To set, I will let you back in before we. So I don't know how many other structures you need to deliver a program in. in, in no, we don't in, need in any extra just, just to protect but what I don't we have. Think, yes, well, I don't think that that's a luxury we can afford. And if you want to look at the, the finances that we are likely to have, I want to agree with you that the strong urban centre is essential for strong rural, you know, stronger rural areas. And you, you do have a magnet in Galway City. It's to get people beyond that is the challenge, and that's where the programmes are needed. And there has been a lot of development and rural development programs in your area. And they would want to be considered the number of structures you have uh, uh, in order to ensure that the, the people of the area are getting... very much supported by the local community. All very yeah. positive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Deputy, any sub-questions? Deputy Kindler, are you okay? I don't know. Well, I, I said the... The, the groups that have benefited are hugely um, impressed with the hands-on approach to these companies, irrespective of the, you know, the, the, the lower than average pay that the CEO has achieved compared to some of the other Deputy companies in other, uh, other areas. Yeah. But uh, they, they, would, they, would, they would have a genuine concern that if Galway County Council, and as far as I remember, I respect them and all of that, that if they get their hands on this money, that it will not flow out to the peripheral areas. I to you, Deputy, it shouldn't be in any way taken in with some of the propaganda that's been put about. These monies that have been allocated through whatever sources from the European Union are ring fenced for the purposes of which they're allocated. And I want to see the monies that are allocated going to the development of projects for the people, not in establishment structures. 